I now have the pleasure of introducing our next speaker. Joanna Michaels is a longtime friend and transgender community activist. She actively promotes the missions of the Sacramento Valley Veterans and the Sacramento and Greater Placer Chapters of PFLAG through participation in support groups and speaking engagements throughout the Sacramento area. Joanna Michaels. Just in case. <laughs> it's indeed a pleasure. I got asked to speak and I said yes. And then of course I did the Leon thing. I said, what am I gonna talk about? <laughs> but I am a transgender woman and I'm proud of it. Yes. And I'm proud to be here. Yes. We're here to honor our fallen brothers and sisters. Not with anger, not with pain, but with joy. Because yeah. yes. they lived their lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. They became authentic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they went out and did the job. Mm -hmm. I want to give you some hope. My life has been hope and love. Yeah. That's how I feel I got here. <coughs> As I was doing the research for this, you know, playing around in my head, thinking, what am I going to say? I came across a quote, and this is from Chief Dan George, who's a First Nation of Canada member. And he was a writer, a poet, an actor, and above all, a native of Canada. And he said, my friends, how desperately do we need to be loved and to love? With it, we are creative. With it, we march tirelessly. With it and it alone, we're able to sacrifice for others. So I'm going to try and, and, and give you hope and, and explain how I got here through those two things, love and hope. When I was born, the doctor um, told my parents they had a son. I don't remember who the doctor was. I'm sure he's retired by now. <laughs> but my parents were misinformed. From the time I can remember being able to talk and walk and act, I was a girl. And my parents were always redirecting me. Because in society, back then, you weren't allowed to be anything but a boy or a girl. There were no other choices. It was illegal to be transgender or homosexual. The terms they used back then were cross-dresser or some other demeaning term. And so my parents went on a mission. They were going to make me be the son that they were told they had. They loved me. They were not cruel people. They were people that didn't have the, the knowledge. Nobody back then had the knowledge. I think when I was born, Harry Benjamin was just first studying the issue of being transsexual. So nobody knew. What they didn't know is society wouldn't accept me. That society would be cruel. If society saw me walking down the street and not so masculine, I'd get picked on. If I couldn't throw a baseball right, oh my God, how could I be the boy that they knew I was supposed to be? So this went on most of my life, through high school, through college. I tried to fit in, because why? I wanted the love of my parents. How could I not get the love of my parents? And it was clear to me that I had to conform. I had to be who my parents loved. They loved Jack. Joanna was, they didn't even know Joanna existed other than I was somewhat of a sissy, apparently. <coughs> <laughs> so, I grew up with that, and I wanted to be loved. Who doesn't? Who doesn't want to be loved and accepted? And I'm so encouraged when I meet parents like Lori Marchand, who loved her daughter. And her daughter is spoken here. And she is so eloquent and such a young lady. Proud to know them both. But those are the things that happen when you have love and hope. I kept hoping my parents 
would figure it out. They didn't. But I still loved them. Because love is the important thing. As I went through life, I played sports. I tried to get my body in shape to be the boy that they wanted. And I was pretty good. You know, I could play some sports. Those boys didn't have nothing on me. <laughs> but all the time, I was like, God, why do I have to do this? Why can't I be authentic? So I had to keep a secret that none of my family knew. And I went on. I went to college, and I ran out of money. And guess what? The Army wanted me. Because Vietnam was going on. And so I don't know if that was love. They just wanted me. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I'm not going to be able to fit in. So I went and interviewed all the services, and I became an Air Force survival instructor. What a macho job. And I was good at it. And I was sure that somehow I would overcome this female gender, this, this person that I was. And I was going to be that son that my parents always wanted. And I kept hoping. Kept hoping I would find a way to fit in and finally resolve the issue in my head. My gender was male, and I couldn't because I knew I was female. All during my life, I used distraction. I sang. I got to the Philippines. I designed clothes so that I could be a little more feminine. Because I was a singer, I could get away with it. So distractions helped me. But I kept hoping that someday I would find a way. So along the way, I had plenty of love. I had plenty of help. My wife loves me. My daughter won't talk to me. But she will someday. Because I have hope. Yes. And hope gets you through a lot. Yes, it does. Yes. And so when I finally transitioned, I transitioned because I came out to my family and I told them who I was. I said, I'm a woman and I'm proud of it. Yes. And that was the first time that I felt that release, that, that hope was finally going to come my way. I was working for my brother and he fired me because I was transgender. And he couldn't get his head around it. It was his company, so. But as we all know, a lot of us in this room, you get fired for being transgender. And so I moved on. And all I can say is that love and hope got me through. Love from my family got me through. Some of my family doesn't talk to me, but love from the rest of them got me through. And I feel that every day. And I want you to feel that. I want you to go out of here and feel proud. I want you to go out of here and feel the love. There is no way to defeat hate by hating bigger. Mm. The only way you defeat hate is by love. And that's what we should go out and do. Do what you can do. If you can speak, speak. If you can organize, organize. But we have made such progress. And we are making more progress every day. So if I could leave you with one thought, if I can find it. Again, Chief Dan George spoke to me with this quote. May the stars carry your sadness away. May the flowers fill your heart with beauty. May hope forever wipe away your tears. And above all, May the silence make you strong. Yeah. That's my hope. Thank you.